Hi, once again, my name is Jessica Washington, here with A Million Minds, and I'm going to go ahead and give you some mind games for you. Well, not really games, but here's some tips with the instructional coaching. Now, I want to go ahead and preface this real quick. There is a video I did that's about your first week as an instructional coach, or what to do that first week to two weeks. Watch that video before you watch this video because this is a direct, 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 direct tag along, tag along, tag along, if you wanna say it, to the very first video. But I wanna break down what should happen after about your second week of observations. If you already have gone in and you've already left the positive note feedback like I referenced in the first video, if you've already built that rapport, are you just ready to go in and start doing formal observations? Hopefully you said no because it's not quite yet for the formal observation. We're still building the relationship and building the rapport. So there's a couple of things that you need to do before we get to that formal, and that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. Now, the very first thing that you want to do is just some work for yourself. You need to take a, a list of your teachers because this is personal work, and you wanna list your teachers down and you're gonna list them or place them into three different categories. Your three categories are high, medium, and low. Meaning high need, medium need, and low need. Now, this personal information that you're just using to assess it, you're going to look and see if your teacher needs a lot of support or if they're high need. Meaning that when you're walking into the classroom, you see that there's procedures are really not in place. They might not have a good grasp of the curriculum. You can kind of see the objectives are not aligned. The lesson plans really need support. You're noticing those different things. So you already know because you're seeing this and you're not seeing that rhythm of teaching that we kind of talk about, they're going to need a lot of support from you in the classroom and in teaching. Not a problem. You're marking it down as a high need. Here's another thing. All first year teachers are high need. It doesn't matter how good it looks. All first year teachers always automatically go high need because it's really their first time in the classroom. And think about when you were first in the classroom. Baby, I know. You don't even want to hear my stories. The second one is medium need which means that you're seeing a lot of good strategies, but just a couple of hits and misses there. For instance, maybe they have a great classroom procedure, but their lesson plan really doesn't bring it all the way around in a full cycle. Or you turn around and see that they have great objectives up, but they're really not doing checking for understanding. So that's a medium support, meaning that maybe a PD or two, they'll turn around and be able to self-reflect and fix those things. Maybe they just need to do an observation or two, or you just do feedback with them. But you can say that you pretty much know that they have a good grasp, but they just need that additional support. Your last one is your low need teachers. We know those old school veterans, been there forever. You don't have to tell them, baby, they've been there, they know the curriculum, they wrote the curriculum. They was on the direct district team when they came out with the rollout. Now, <laughs> while your veteran teachers might be like that, and that's when you walk into the classroom and they have their procedures in place, kids are lined up, they have their rules and regulations, they have the curriculum laid out, they know how to do the beginning, middle, and end. That's great. That means that they won't need a lot of support from you. But here's a secret. They actually like having discussions and just talking about curriculum and seeing all that's out there. So while they might be low support, it doesn't mean low maintenance or I'm going to forget about you. It just means that you might not have to do as much in-person work with them in building. But trust and believe those are the first teachers to sign up for professional development. So you want to make sure that you're always giving that support. So now that you've made that list, and you've turned around and done that, that's for you. Here's the second piece that needs to happen. We go back in and we do another informal observation, but this time it's a little bit more purposeful. You still go in and we're giving that distinctive positive, not just, hey, good job, but I really like how you had Johnny read out the objectives that really made sense and I can tell that he understood. Remember, our positives really have purpose. But in this case, now you're gonna go ahead and ask a question. So let's say you have your paper, you put your positive feedback, and then you ask a question. It is a I wonder question. Hmm, 
Johnny really had great feedback. I wonder what would happen if you turned around and had two other students repeat that. What do you think? Do you see how that question took exactly what you're saying or it can take something else in the classroom, but you put it back into the teacher so the teacher can be empowered? That's a I wonder question. It's a simple gateway to a conversation that you're ready to have. Let's say Sally Mae is doing a uh, teaching lesson and you walk in and see Sally Mae and you might come out and say, hey, Sally, really great procedures in what you're doing with the do now. Students were highly engaged and interactive. I wonder what would happen if you took the do now and built upon their vocabulary. What do you think? See, what you're doing is you're sneaking in an instructional practice, but you're not being direct with it because you wanna have them empower. Always leave too with, if you would like to discuss about it more, please feel free to see me because that's what it is. You're opening up a gateway for a conversation, not something for you to solve. Because what we're trying to do in building our work with instructional coaching is building empowered teachers. Teachers who are empowered will change themselves. You don't necessarily have to force the change in them. You're also going to make sure that these conversations or these questions usually have a how and not an if. Here's your trick. If you turned around and said, what would you do or what would you do if students did this? If has an accusation kind of point to it. But if you turn around and say, I wonder how students could do this, it's a little bit more friendly. So one of your tricks are try not to use the word if, use the word how. How makes people think about next steps. I know you can do that, right? So here's your very, very last piece. And this goes back to you being a personal note. You're going to see how teachers respond to that. If a teacher comes back and wants to have a conversation, whether it's two or three minutes, not a problem. And you're also doing kind of like your checklist on three. If they have that conversation, they're highly reflective and engaged. Yes, you know that they're a high support teacher who can do um, constructive criticism. If they come back and they're defensive, it was just a simple open question. So you know that you're gonna to have to be a lot more poignant in those conversations. And if they don't come back, well, maybe that's a whole nother list. But this is just a way for you to start understanding the type of relationships and roles you need to have with your teacher. So we looked at steps one, I'm going to say, kind of your first to second week with instructional coaching in the last video. This one, let's focus on weeks two to four. And that's what you're building, because after this piece, we're going to go into more formalized observations. But hopefully now you have the relationship to really, really build those. So don't forget to make your personal list. Don't forget to reflect on your reflective questions, your empowering questions for teachers. And three, let's start building that relationship to see how teachers respond to feedback. And so you know how to build those conversations. I know you've got it. I can trust that you will do it. Once again, this is Miss Jessica Washington. I like to be called Miss Jessie, and I'm here with a million minds trying to make you be ready for the empowerment of the world.